The Roast Game. Four long years of expanding the understanding of the phenomenon at hand. From the calories of each serving, to the death of each child, from the psychological will tester hypothetical, to the roast gang theory, from the little corpse of a boy or girl, to the holiday dinner table, from contradictory Christmas consumption statistics to a contradictory empirical reality of a traditional Christian Christmas dinner. I am Brian Mullins the Fox. Welcome to The Roast Game, a final look. Hi there, let's analyze the history of studying the Roast Game death toll. It officially started in the second and last Roast Game debate on debate.org called Should Christmas End? Me Debating Wilson704, one of the 16 trolls I had beef with, apparently, in the Roast Game debate.org shitstorm saga, which has started on November 29th, 2017 and ended in early December, but even then, the Roast Game Shitstorm Saga on Debate.org was alive and well. It got so bad to the point where activity on Debate.org was drawn to a halt for a temporary period of time. Here is the audio transcript of the debate, the one I used celebrating the one-year anniversary of the Roast Game as a topic of discussion. While I play the audio, I will show the screenshots of each round in the debate. Without further ado, hit it. Now let's analyze the second debate called Should Christmas End? In which Wilson704 challenged me instead of me challenging him. Wilson704 is the con and I am the pro in this debate. Wilson704 starts out the debate saying, I would like to hear your point of view first please. Then. I step into the debate saying, first example, the roast game. The roast game is pretty simple. First ask any family member what is special about a holiday roast. The family member would have the tendency to guess assumptively, ham, turkey, beef. You say no to the family member, then you ask them, who or what do you think is special? The family member says, I believe that children are special. You respond, so you eat children for a Christmas roast. The family member would freak out at you because he knew that the family ate children and he is surprised that you knew it too. The whole point of the game is to get your point across, which is the idea that the family eats children as their Christmas roast. And you interview and prove your common knowing and realizing of the idea or tradition that families have. If they freak out, they already admitted it. It makes logical sense because when you ask a family member these questions, you get the sense that the family member is assuming that I don't know what they were eating. Making excuses like guessing average roast meats like ham, turkey, or chicken. Then he faces your sudden answer, no. Which gives him a sign that he is just making excuses to escape the question and to carry on with life. The roast game is just a psychological mind tester. It tests the human will to tell the truth. Asides, it is easily provable by the fact that the roast game itself is easy proof that families were eating their own children after slaughtering them. After they slaughtered them, they did this process where they skin the children, take out any fecal matter or anything inedible to humans, slice the right meat parts off like the roast meat, debacterialize the meat, season it, then cook it. After cooking it, they eat the children. That is my proof, which is the logical explanation of the truth that is found out in the roast game, which to be honest, is absolutely mind-blowing. And here are the sources, including at the very bottom, me citing the source of the original debate before this one. Then Wilson704 makes his argument. I don't really understand by what you are stating, but I will try to and respect it. Yes, I am new to this system and I am just trying to get my name out there. Here are my reasons why I think Christmas is a good thing. 
Number one, Christmas is a time where you can relax with your family. Number two, you get time off from school and work. Number three, you have a chance to celebrate or celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. Number four, presents. Christmas is a good time where you can be with your family or close friends. Christmas is a time of peace, happiness, and joy. Then I make my argument. Christmas should end because 18,568,322 children were slaughtered for not believing in Christmas. It's not about presents, family, and anything else you suggested. Second, giving is a bad thing. What if the boy or girl doesn't want it, need it, earn it, or deserve it? If they just want something without making a compromise that kids don't want to work hard for their presents, then they don't deserve any presents. All they ever deserve is love and honesty. Also, Christmas is a lie because it's not about presents or anything you suggested. It's about lying. It is the holiday of lies. The second video are examples of photos of children that were slaughtered for not believing in Christmas. And I used this for a movie back then that I made myself called 1998, The Deadliest Year for Children in American History. Here are the videos as sources. Also, why would you believe all these lies your parents told you? Like about Santa and about other things people lie about. Then Wilson704 responds, Just because someone is slaughtered because someone with other beliefs killed them, doesn't mean that the holiday should end. Many people died for America's freedom, so Independence Day came into play. Look at ISIS, for example. They killed tens of thousands of people just because they don't agree with their beliefs. With all other things aside, Christmas is not about money, family, presents, or time off. Although all of those things are good, they are not the reason for Christmas. Christmas is about the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Why do you think there is Christ in Christmas? Then I argued, Jesus Christ is fake. He never existed, though you believe in him. Nothing is good about it. Not the giving, not the lies, not anything. Why have faith in someone who doesn't exist? You have to face the reality that Jesus Christ doesn't exist. Also, just like we need to eradicate ISIS, we need to eradicate Christmas. Though Christians have killed far more than ISIS has in their entire history. Independence Day has nothing to do with Christmas. If it did, they don't deserve to die. They deserve to survive. If you believe that these soldiers deserve to die, you are ungrateful for this country. Because what if they want to survive? They deserve to survive. Independence Day should not relate to death. The only holiday that should relate to death is Christmas. And Christmas should end. There is no good reason to have Christmas. So that's why it should end. I believe that the death of a child is never justified. And it never will be. I believe that children should deserve a life worth living and not having to be slaughtered for not believing in Christmas. Sources to prove that Jesus Christ never existed. All those three sources. Then, Wilson704 makes his final argument. First of all, I love this country with all my heart. Number two... Do you realize that by ending Christmas, that means ending the holiday most people love? 46% of people in the U.S. say Christmas is their favorite holidays. I just can't wrap my around the fact that you want to end Christmas. Just because you don't think Jesus was real, spoiler alert, he was. And finally, I end the debate with all my rebuttals, my few conclusions, and the sources presented. Thanks for your argument. I was waiting for you patiently, but you still don't understand that Christmas should end, even though only 46% of people love it. Without further ado, here are my rebuttals. Number one, quote unquote, I just can't wrap my around the fact that you want to end Christmas just because you don't think Jesus was real. Spoiler alert, he was. First off, that is not the reason I want Christmas to end. The real reason, and I stated this before in my arguments, is because children were being slaughtered for not believing in Christmas. After that, they cut off anything inedible to humans, including fecal matter. Then they cut off the meats that they believe is edible, such as the roast meat. They season it, cook it, then eat the child, child by child, year after year. Here is what I said. The roast game is pretty simple. First, ask any family member what is special about a holiday roast. The family member would have the tendency to guess assumptively. Ham, turkey, beef, you say no to the family member. Then you ask them, 
Who or what do you think is special? The family member says, I believe that children are special. You respond, so you eat children for a Christmas roast. The family member would freak out at you because he knew that the family ate children and he is surprised that you knew it too. The whole point of the game is to get your point across, which is the idea that the family eats children as their Christmas roast. And you interview and prove your common knowing and realizing of the idea or tradition that families have. If they freak out, they already admitted it. It makes logical sense because when you ask a family member these questions, you get the sense that the family member is assuming that I don't know what they were eating. Making excuses like guessing average roast meats like ham, turkey, or chicken, or beef. Then he faces your sudden answer, no. Which gives him a sign that he is just making excuses to escape the question and to carry on with life. The roast game is just a psychological mind tester. It tests the human will to tell the truth. Asides, it is easily provable by the fact that the roast game itself is easy proof that families were eating their own children after slaughtering them. After they slaughtered them, they did this process where they skin the children, take out any fecal matter or anything inedible to humans, slice the right meat parts off like the roast meat, debacterialize the meat, season it, then cook it. After cooking it, they eat the children. That is my proof, which is the logical explanation of the truth that is found out in the roast game, which to be honest, is absolutely mind-blowing. And second, Jesus Christ never existed. You can't just believe something as real with just saying he is without giving any real factual evidence in which the burden of proof is on you. Number two, here are my reasons why I think Christmas is a good thing. Number one, Christmas is a time where you can relax with your family. Number two, you, you get time off from school and work. Number three, you have a chance to celebrate, celebrate, the birth of Jesus Christ, number four, presents. You said that at first with some spelling errors, but you derailed your own arguments by saying this, Christmas is not about money, family, presents, or time off. Though you may have the spelling error, but just derailing your own argument makes no sense at all. Because if you want to keep your argument, then keep it. If you want to back up your argument, list a source. You did neither of these, so you lose the debate. Number three, just because someone is slaughtered because someone with other beliefs killed them doesn't mean that the holiday should end. Many people died for America's freedom, so Independence Day came into play. Look at ISIS, for example. They killed tens of thousands of people just because they don't agree with their beliefs. First off, spelling error again. Second, Independence Day has nothing to do with Christmas or the celebrating of it either. These children didn't deserve to die. They deserve to live and completely reject the idea of Christmas. And the holiday should be banned. Just like I said before in my argument, just like we need to eradicate ISIS, we need to eradicate Christmas. Number four, I love this country with all of my heart. Number two, do you realize that by ending Christmas, that means ending the holiday most people love? Just because 46% of people love Christmas as their favorite holiday, it's not because they just love it. It's because Christians like you would rather intimidate people, especially children, to believe in it or die. But only the people don't die. Children are the only ones who die. And second, if you really love your country, our country, you never justify the slaughtering of innocent children for not believing in Christmas. Most people don't care about children. They slaughter them and eat them. Maybe you're just one of those people. Number five, Christmas is about the birth of our Savior Jesus Christ. Why do you think there is Christ in Christmas? Just like I stated before in my first rebuttal, you can't just believe something as real with just saying he is without giving any real factual evidence in which the burden of proof is on you. Here's my argument to counterclaim and disprove the existence of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is fake. He never existed, though you believe in him. Nothing is good about it. Not the giving, not the lies, not anything. Why have faith in someone who doesn't exist? You have to face the reality that Jesus Christ does not exist. That's all my rebuttals. Here's the main conclusion. Number one, 
Christmas should end because 18,568,322 children were slaughtered for not believing in Christmas. It's not about presents, family, and anything else you suggested. Second, giving is a bad thing because what if the boy or girl doesn't want it, need it, earn it, or deserve it? If they just want something without making a compromise that kids don't want to work hard for their presents, then they don't deserve any presents. All they ever deserve is love and honesty. Also, Christmas is a lie. Because it's not about presents or anything you suggested. It's about lying. It is the holiday of lies. Number two, Christmas should end because children were eaten after they were slaughtered, which was proven in the roast game. Number three, Jesus Christ never existed. Number four, just like we need to eradicate ISIS, we need to eradicate Christmas. Number five, you never derail your own argument. You either have to keep your argument or at least back it up with legitimate sources, which you can't because you have the burden of proof. Here are all the sources I stated in all my arguments in chronological order. This has been a good debate we had, especially for me as pro, and I had so much fun debating with you, and I hope you have the best of luck in future debates. The choice is clear. Vote for pro. I won by five points because of this vote from Superduds. I do think your evidence is somewhat biased in this, however, since it fully supports your claims you make and is not proven well enough by the con, and con uses a bias or opinionated view, that is where sources go. Arguments go pro here as well. Khan could have countered that sources were biased and had no real intention, which could outweigh his arguments he was relying on, since he uses a source that people were slaughtered when they didn't believe in Xmas and the con never really counters. I have a right as a judge to vote on the arguments. Your examples you used in round 3 are completely irrelevant and complete fallacy for the claim you're making. ISIS kills people for not being Muslim, not celebrating Ramadan. Argument goes con. Well, after this vote, Superduds became one of the 16 trolls that I had some internet beef with on DDO, or the Roast Game Debate Shitstorm Saga, in other words. Ironically, I got to give some sort of criticism to Super Duds' vote. Super Duds didn't even vote for Khan. He only voted for me, the pro, and he made a straw man argument. His straw man argument was Khan could have countered that sources were biased and had no real intention, which could outweigh his arguments he was relying on. What is a straw man, you may ask? A straw man is an argument based on the misrepresenting of an opponent's position such that an easily knocked down target or straw man is defeated rather than the actual issue or position. Super Dud's straw man argument has defeated itself rather than the roast game itself or my position when it comes to the roast game thereof. And finally, I was not the one that mentioned ISIS the first time. Wilson704 was. Therefore, making this straw man Super Duds has made, in his reason for voting decision, extremely apparent. That will do for the analysis. On May 24th, 2018, I started a series called The Roast Game Theory, which used the roast game death toll as a dividing factor between all the deaths and only one in America. I did this throughout seasons 1, 2, 3, and finally 4. On March 3rd, 2019, I made a long and interesting video proving the roast game death toll by counting off every other cause of death for children to prove the yearly roast game death toll as a part of a mini-series called Bashing the Religious, just after the drama triathlon died. Here's the video. Hi guys, I am the fox with the chip deer and I am going to be bashing the religious again. This time, it's about moral grandstanding. ISIS versus Christmas. Islam versus Christianity. Who will win? If you haven't already seen the title, the answer is very obvious. But which is deadlier anyways? Islam or Christianity? First up, Islam, for example. ISIS. According to a Wikipedia article called Casualties of the Syrian Civil War, it shows the overall deaths of that civil war. I add them all up together and I get 1,963,034 deaths. Now here comes Christianity. 
For example, Christmas, or more specifically, the roast game. The fact that families literally ate their own children as their Christmas roasts after slaughtering them for not believing in Christmas. We'll start with the yearly death toll. 977,280 children are slaughtered for not believing in Christmas from 1998 to the summer of 2017. Or more specifically, here's the total amount of time during which this phenomena happened. And yes, 18.6 is closer to 19 than it is to 18. So that's why I multiplied by 19 and got 18,568,322. I will prove this death toll in a little bit. But I gotta ask you guys, so which religion do you prefer? ISIS as an example of Islam with nearly 2 million people dead? Or Christmas, more specifically the roast game as an example of Christianity with almost if not nearly 20 million children slaughtered and consumed? If you said neither of them, good job, you're moral. If you preferred Islam, you're immoral. If you preferred Christianity, you are equally or if not more immoral than the people who preferred Islam. Christianity is definitely deadlier than Islam, take that Fox News, but Christianity is not even remotely as deadly as communism. Next round, which religion is the most hypocritical, Islam or Christianity? The answer is both of them. And final round, which religion has the most influence? Islam or Christianity? First off, here comes Islam. According to PewResearch.org, there are about 3.45 million Muslims of all ages in the US, or about 1.1% of the US population. Next up, Christianity. According to PewForum.org, out of the US population, 70.6% of Americans are Christians. What's the US population right now? As of Wednesday, January 30th, 2019, there are about 328,119,527. According to worldometers.info, I've done the calculation and I got 231,652,386 Christians in America. As of January 30th, 2019. Alrighty, so here's the thing. Let's actually confirm the death toll of 18,568,000 1322 that I mentioned earlier. So according to Statista.com, between 1998 and 2017, the average size of a family in America is 3.16, so about 3 people. This is what would have been the total population of children in America, but the fact is, families ate their own children, meaning that the population of children in America was stagnant, if not steadily declining in some years. According to Child Stats Gov. I looked at this table graph and I looked at the numbers of all children in millions from 1998 to 2017. And this is what I got. This is how I got the total amount of children that died every year. I added the amount of children then subtracted some because the population of children kept declining at times. But now, let's get to the nitty gritty and find the truth. Now let's subtract to actually find the number of the rest of the children that died every year which would essentially prove the death toll. I included every single possible cause of child death in America. First, let's start with birth defects. According to March of Dimes, birth defects affect one in every 33 babies born each year in the US. So that's about 66,667 children to be counted off. Now we're at 2,133,333. Next, we have accidents as an unintentional injuries. According to the CDC, on average, 12,175 children between 0 to 19 years of age died each year in the United States from an unintentional injury. Then I multiply that number by 19, which takes off 231,325 children off the actual death toll. Now it's at 1,902,008 children. Next, we have preterm birth deaths. According to the World Health Organization, the United States of America has a total of 517,400 pre-birth deaths. That takes a huge chunk out of the actual death toll. Now we're at 1,384,608. 
Well, according to the CDC, the leading causes of death of children between the age of 1 to 4 and 5 to 14 are accidents, congenital malformations, deformations, and chromosomal abnormalities, assault, or homicide. Well, cannibalism falls under homicide, so that's for the end of the video. Accidents, cancer, and suicide. Next, the pie chart of childhood deaths by disease per year according to CureSearch.org, which shows the total of 4,446 deaths a year. I multiplied that by 19 and got 84,474, which leads the actual death toll to be 1,300,134. Some children die at birth. According to NBC News from 2013, an estimated 11,300 newborn babies die each year in the United States on the day they are born. I multiply that by 19, then get 214,700, which leads the actual death toll to be 1,085,434. Then there's death by drowning. According to the CDC, from 2005 to 2014, there were an average of 3,536 fatal unintentional drownings, non-boating related, annually in the United States. About 10 deaths per day. An additional 332 people died each year from drowning in boating related incidents. About 1 in 5 people who die from drowning are children, 14 and younger. That means 773.6 children die every year of drowning. I multiply that by 19 and get just about 14,698, which leads the actual death toll to be 1,070,736. Then there's child abuse. According to childhelp.org, five children die every day from child abuse and neglect. Multiply that by 365, then by 19, which I get 34,675, which leads the actual death toll to be 1,036,061. Then there's death by car accidents. According to Wikipedia, about 2,000 children under 16 die every year in traffic collisions. I multiplied that by 19 and I got 38,000 and it took 38,000 children out of the actual population which is currently 998,061. Then there's filicide. Psst, by the way, this is actually murdering your own children as a parent, not slaughtering a child as a Christmas roast, because filicide is actual murder. According to Wikipedia, it says, on average, according to FBI statistics, 450 children are murdered by their parents each year in the United States. I multiplied that by 19 and I got 8,550, then subtracted that to the actual death toll and got 989,511 as the current death toll. And finally, at long last, death by influenza. According to the CDC.gov website called Flu View, the total amount of children that died of the flu in the 16 seasons I calculated is 1,713. Also, according to NBC News, 110 children died from the flu in the US in the 2009 pandemic of H1N1 swine flu. That new strain killed 282 children and 358 children in total died from influenza that season. I calculated similar numbers. The first one is when I started out by adding 282 by 358, which I got 640, then multiplied by 19, as in 19 years of the roast game death toll. The second one is when I added 110 and 282 by 358, which I got 750, then multiplied it by 16, or the amount of seasons I recently got 1,713 deaths from. And finally, when I added all of those three numbers that are in the screenshot up, I multiplied them by 19, then subtracted by 1,713, or the said total amount of deaths from the flu according to said statistic. I essentially added up the three similarly big numbers, 12,160, 12,000, and 12,537. 
then divided by 3 and I got just about 12,232. The difference between the total yearly death toll and the yearly roast game death toll is 12,231. I added both 12,232 and 12,231 up, then divided by 2, and well, it seems like this death toll of 18,568,322 is confirmed. It would seem arbitrary if I rounded up this number to 12,232, because there is no number after 0.5. All in all, even though it's a fact that Christianity is deadlier than Islam, it's not even remotely as deadly as communism. I bash the religious. I am the fox with the chipped ear, signing out. I went off on a passionate rant on April 13th, 2019, called Putting the Roast Game Death Toll into Perspective and who are the real conspiracy theorists? Here's the video. Since the topic of the roast game is starting to become my guilty pleasure on this channel, I just want to put the roast game death toll into perspective, and I will go on sort of a big rant. Let's do the math. By the way, doing the math is also my absolute guilty pleasure on this channel because of the fact that people get salty over it sometimes. Maybe not as much anymore. I don't know. According to Wikipedia, let's start with the Holocaust and add those numbers up. Alright, we're at 16,406,527. Now let's add the total amount of US military casualties in all the wars and the total amount of deaths of 9-11, according to Wikipedia, to the Holocaust death toll and see what we get. Then we'll see the difference between the roast game death toll and the amount of deaths of the Holocaust, all the US military casualties in all the wars, and 9-11 combined. Okay, now we're at 17,860,331. And finally, here's the difference. 707,991. Still under a million? Now put all of this into perspective yourself. The roast game death toll is bigger than the Holocaust, all the US military casualties in every single war, and the total deaths of 9-11 combined. The roast game death toll is, in fact, the biggest death toll in American history, and part of world history. And now, here's the rant. People in my country, the United States of America, and myself as a kid, believed that Christmas was the most wonderful time of the year, where families get together on Christmas morning in the past to gather around the Christmas tree and open the presents. Then hours later comes Christmas dinner. In reality, it's not a turkey. It's certainly not roast chicken. It's certainly not roasted or glazed ham. It's not lamb, it's either your brother, sister, cousin, or any child that you might not even know enough about. Because there has been such a holiday tradition that simply because a child refused to believe in Christmas, Santa Claus, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, Frosty the Snowman, etc., that kid would be slaughtered. There are no laws against cannibalism in the USA. That's how families got away with it. It's not some spooky conspiracy theory that has no basis in reality, facts, logic, and reason. I did not just pull this shit straight out of my ass. If my conclusion fits with reality, facts, logic, and reason, and if there's no fallacy in the way, I couldn't have possibly made this up even if I fucking tried. I have proven it though, 18,568,322 children were slaughtered and eaten as Christmas roasts for not believing in Christmas. That's more deaths than the Holocaust, all US military casualties, and 9-11 combined, goddammit. Hell, when I visited that single family slaughterhouse down in Fort Mill, South Carolina as a kid, 
and growing up, I remembered seeing one room having light blue carpet, and all the other rooms had normal 70s shaggy brown carpet. And I keep on thinking to myself, why is that room the only one with the blue carpet? I'll tell you why. It's because Damien Amber Hefner was slaughtered in that very fucking room. The very first child that I discovered in season one of the roast game theory with Detective Brian Mullins the Fox, that was the child that was slaughtered in that house. You know why that room used to have shaggy brown carpet but not anymore? Because they could not possibly get the blood off the fucking carpet enough so they couldn't find any replacement carpet with the same color as the old shaggy one, so someone had to choose light blue carpet. Shit happens. I couldn't do anything about it. I wasn't even fucking alive back in 1998. I was born in 1999. But the point is, that is what happened. You can't possibly deny this and say families would never do such a thing. Don't give me this no true Scotsman bullshit. If any of you out there are 17 years or older, think about way back in the day for a moment. Just think about it. What if you refused to believe in Santa Claus or Christmas or any of that shit? You would have been a Christmas roast. Hell, I myself would have been one if I wasn't so fucking gullible or devout to my Christianity. My sister would have been one. My fucking brother would have been one. Hell, even my older sister would have been one. But we were all obedient. We were all just little angels. In fact, I was just the biggest little shit of them all. I may be using my emotions, but this is a fact that just blows my fucking mind. Why were people still happy and joyous during Christmas time back then, singing Christmas carols, Kissing under that goddamn mistletoe. Opening presents. Having a holly jolly Christmas. Instead of showing their true feelings out of sincerity. You know, just be honest. How does losing a loved one feel like to you? Because that's why Christmas is not all that joyous to begin with in reality. That's why it's traumatic for me to actually go to that mobile home in New Lexington, Ohio. So much blood. This whole slaughter happened in the living room. Some other family members might have smeared blood off their shoes on floors of other rooms. More blood than others. That was Nicholas Justin Emmett's blood from 2001. Not the blood of St. Nicholas. Did you get that reference pun? This is literal, actual proof that families slaughtered their own children and ate them as Christmas roasts. Even if the roast game theory was just a conjecture, it was a confirmed theory because the synonym for conjecture is theory and yeah. Based on the fact that families, in fact, ate their own children as their Christmas roasts after slaughtering them for not believing in Christmas. It may sound circular, but it's true. It's not based on circular logic, of course not, because there's evidence. And don't you goddamn motherfucking dare tell me that I'm lying to my audience. I am not lying to my audience or anyone who thinks critically. If you or any other charlatan out there is calling me a conspiracy theorist and not having the gall, the balls, the audacity to address any of my videos, arguments, or points I have proven, or to even be honest for once, then you're lying to me. And if you are trying to convince your audience and mine that I'm just this furry lying sack of fucking shit, you are the one who's lying. I had to deal with a bunch of fucking reactionaries who didn't give a single shit about anything I've ever said or any videos I've ever posted. They just resorted to laughing and shit talking because they cannot prove me wrong on a substantive basis or even a fair and honest one. I've been through drama and I can't really say it sucks either because everybody gets into drama and stirs up drama. What's best is that video I made fact-checking a shitty ABC News article from 2014, published by Liz Neperent. I may have oversimplified in that old calorie video when it comes to turkey, 
But the simple fact of the matter is that you look at that table and you could just multiply 22 by 3.5, which is between 3 to 4 slices per serving without sides. How is this a baseless conspiracy theory when the majority of my videos, pretty much all my videos, gave context, evidence, and nutrition facts to support my position? In that the only sources that they themselves can possibly give was when going on during this whole back and forth debacle gave a link to a website where it just says we ate ham or something as a Christmas roast. Something that's opposite of reality. Not even trying to prove his point, but just only linking to a source that just says the opposite and going with his confirmation bias. Other than that, they're nothing but a bunch of petty reactionaries who only tried to build up a name for themselves off of petty e-drama. And when they're criticized or called out on their bullshit, they spurg out. Because anybody who essentially criticizes them at all, which is against their position, is an egotistical, tinfoil hat wearing conspiracy theorist who allegedly hides evidence because he was being belittled as in purposely humiliated by some sort of fucking troll on the internet who makes nothing but shitty content and use that as proof that I'm a conspiracy theorist and that I'm hiding evidence. Can somebody please tell me who are the real conspiracy theorists? I'm not projecting at all here. I'm just being completely and totally honest. Who are the real conspiracy theorists? Who's claiming that I'm hiding evidence? Who are the real liars? I'll tell you who. Going Gone, EMC2103, Will Kincaid, Star Shadow Wolf, and most importantly, as a part of this troll group, Slowpoke Garcia. And any other dumbass who subscribes to them because you agree with them. They are nothing but reactionaries who want to view the holiday tradition known as Christmas time as how they think it has been and always will be and never ever ever how it actually was during the 19 year period of the roast game. I am Secret Agent Bry Guy signing out. On June 10th, 2019, I made this video and called it the Canadian Roast Game. Canadian families ate their own children as Christmas roasts. I will cut to the death toll part. So in the next segment of this video, we will find and prove the death toll. And holy shit, wait till you see how many children are slaughtered and eaten for not believing in Christmas in Canada each year. According to Statistics Canada, on July 1st, 2010, there were an estimated 10.2 million children and young people in Canada. While on July 1st, 2012, the number of children aged 0 to 14 was estimated at 5,663,200 or 16.2% of the population, down 5.8 percentage points from 1982 or 22%. Also according to Statistics Canada, with all the other 12 causes of death out of the way, that includes malignant neoplasms, diabetes mellitus, Alzheimer's disease, diseases of heart, cerebrovascular diseases, influenza and pneumonia, chronic lower respiratory diseases, chronic liver disease and cirrhosis, nephritis, nephrotic syndrome and nephrosis, accidents or unintentional injuries, intentional self-harm or suicide, or assault or homicide. And I got 7,125 after multiplying the 5 years by 3.8, which I got the 19 years, then I subtracted 4,536,800 by 7,125, then I got 4,529,675. And then you multiply by 19, in which you get the Canadian Roast Game Death Toll, or 86,063,825. Wow, what a hell of a number. And the Canadian Roast Game death toll can also be proven by looking at the number of births in Canada from 2018, according to Statista.com. 
the population of children in Canada is decreasing while the Canadian population in general is increasing. Now let's get into the third segment, shall we? Is cannibalism illegal in Canada? Some articles may say so, and some people blindly assume that it was. But I went to the official site to only find that there is no such law against cannibalism, just like with America. But it's Canada this time. Now, why does it seem that the roast game is becoming a law instead of just a fact? What is the definition of law in this context? According to Merriam-Webster, the sixth definition is a statement of an order or relation of phenomena that so far as is known is invariable under the given conditions, or B, a general relation proved or assumed to hold between mathematical or logical expressions. The roast game in general is becoming this relation that's proved or assumed to hold between mathematical factors like calories, the death toll, and consumption statistics, and with logical expressions like reasoning, logic, and how family members would react to you if you asked a question that had to do with this particular phenomenon, instead of them telling you what they actually ate as a Christmas roast in the first place. As I have demonstrated, for almost two years now. And finally, we have reached the final segment of this commentary video. Thank you for watching. I am Secret Agent Bry Guy, signing out. On January 21st, 2021, I found the state with the most casualties in the United States and the age demographic of each death in a video called The Roast Game. Which state has the most casualties? Commentary. Here's the video. Hi everyone, I am Brian Mullins the Fox, and I am going to discover and prove which of these 50 states of the United States of America has the most roast game casualties. How I will calculate to find out is I take the child mortality rate, the population of children in each state separately, take these ratios and percentages into consideration, and literally just add up the numbers. It's that simple. And no, it does not have to represent every single casualty of the roast game. That's not the point of the video. It's just to give an illustration of which state is the deadliest so far. Let's color the US map with bloody colors. Let's just get a quick overview of the child mortality rates of each state in alphabetical order according to the CDC. And now, let the text-to-speech bot do the work for me when it comes to having to read out this shit because it's long as fuck. Here we go! Roast game casualties in children. Alabama, 129,444. Alaska, 22,532. Arizona, 188,955. Arkansas, 82,325. California, 1,043,123. Colorado, 146,963. Connecticut, 80,005 Delaware 23,994 Florida 500,861 Georgia 289,643 Hawaii 37,379 Idaho 51,110 Illinois 331,297 Indiana 183,655 Iowa 86,070 Kansas 82,039 Kentucky 119,912 Louisiana 132,955 Maine 
127,798. Maryland, 159,606. Massachusetts, 157,700. Michigan, 250,470. Minnesota, 153,849. Mississippi, 81,189. Missouri, 162,028. Montana, 26,805. Nebraska, 57,877. Nevada, 81,316. New Hampshire, 63,906. New Jersey, 515,167. New Mexico, 53,511. New York, 496,455. North Carolina, 267,656. North Dakota, 23,807. Ohio, 303,449. Oklahoma, 113,169. Oregon, 100,213. Pennsylvania, 309,808. Rhode Island, 23,772. South Carolina, 129,130. South Dakota, 26,858. Tennessee, 180,290. Texas, 880,315. Utah, 108,618. Vermont, 12,904. Virginia, 221,582. Washington, 201,033. West Virginia, 41,004. Wisconsin, 146,027. Wyoming, 15,279. Here we see now the Rose Game Death Toll by Age group. Under the age of 5 or 1 to 5 years old, the Rose Game Death Toll indicates that within the age group, there were 8,924,862 children under the age of 5 or 1 to 5 years old that were slaughtered for not believing in Christmas. The age of 6 to 11, 2,458,544 children. The age of 12 to 17, 2,442,000 children by law. And last but not least, babies under a year old, 4,742,916 of them. And yes, all that adding up to 18,568,322. The state with the most deaths is obviously California because it's the most densely populated state even as of this year. That's the answer. On February 5th, 2021, I did the same for Canada, found the demographics, and found the deadliest province. It wasn't as complex as America, though. Let's play the video. Hello everybody, I am Brian Mullins the Fox, and welcome to another video on the Canadian Roast Game. This time we're looking into death toll statistics alongside with demographics within the death toll, gender and race wise, and which province is the deadliest in Canada. 
let's start with two age groups. First, let's start with children under the age of five. According to Statista, there is a graphic indicating the number of births in Canada from 2001 to 2020. I added up only from 2001 to 2016, just for good measure, and then subtracted by the total yearly Canadian roast game death toll, which is 4,529,675, and then got 1,639,012 of the children in Canada that were slaughtered for not believing in Christmas from 1998 to 2016 were under the age of five every year. So when it comes to this age group, in total, of the past roughly 19 years, 31,141,228 children under the age of 5. So, using one of the statistics I used in the original 2019 Canadian Roast Game video, 2,890,663 Canadian children from 5 to 14 were slaughtered for not believing in Christmas in Canada every year during the Canadian Roast Game era. So the second batch out of all of them, and the biggest so far, is 54,922,597 children between 5 to 14. So that means that, of course, the Canadian roast game death toll adds up perfectly. Now let's get into the demographics. First let's start off with race. So I'm guessing that the vast majority of the deaths were whites. But what about the slimmest minority, Black Canadians? According to Wikipedia, from a 2016 census, there are a total of 1,198,540, or roughly 1.2 million. And according to the official statistics website of Canada, children under 15 years old represented 26.6% of the Black population, while they represented 16.9% of the total population. At the other end of the age spectrum, 7.3% of the black population were aged 65 years and over, compared to 159 of the total population. So that means as of 2016, 318,812 black Canadian children were living there. So in spite of all this, white Canadians make up the biggest majority in the death toll by race, by 99.97%, while blacks with 2,795,192, with only 0.03% of the total death toll. Let's use another statistic statistic, link in the description. Now, let's analyze by gender. 52% were male and 48% were female. Now, which province is the deadliest? So assuming it's the same with California, the most populated state in America that had the most roast game casualties, it's the same in Canada with Ontario. That's the short and simple answer to which province is the deadliest. Ontario. I knew this video wasn't going to be very long because unlike America, the Canadian roast game death toll is very plain and simple and it's not as complex as America. And that is the long and extensive history of studying the roast game death toll. Tune in next time where we go over the history of studying roast preparation time. This one won't be as long as part four, but stick around, subscribe, hit that notification button, leave a like and comment. I'm Brian Mullins the Fox, signing out. Have a good day.